and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Esper Affinity in Historic. Y'all probably know this, but this is one of my favorite decks to play these Affinity decks with um, Mystic Forge and Ugin. The whole point of this deck, if you're kind of new to it, is basically playing as many spells as you can off the top of your library for free. Of course, Mystic Forge allows you to play artifacts and colorless non-land cards off the top of your library. You usually have to pay their mana cost. If you get Ugin in play to go along with it, though, your colorless spells cost two less to cast. So you can cast a colorless spell, but it costs two less. So we have all of these cards that cost two or less that would then be free. You know, Golden Egg, when you have Ugin in play, is free. Same with Guild Globe, Mindstone, Treasure Map, and even Stone Coil Serpent. You can play it on two for free. Um, to to really hammer home the uh, so like that's kind of like the affinity stuff is is casting artifacts for for free. Um, <clears throat> affinity is a keyword that's on Tezzeret Master of the Bridge. If you're not familiar with it, if you're kind of a newer player, if um, you know it was a it was a keyword back in like Dark Steel and whatever that block was called. Uh, but yeah, basically if affinity, as you can see in the big black text there next to Tezzeret, a spell with affinity for artifacts costs one less to cast for each artifact controlled. So if we have Tezzeret in play, all of our creatures and planeswalkers costs one generic less to cast for each artifact we control. So that means if we have Tezzeret in play and we have six artifacts in play, we could play Ugin because Ugin's a planeswalker. It'll cost six less. If we have five artifacts in play, you can just cast Golos for free. You know, not not spending any mana. You know, four. Then you can cast Karn for free. Either Karn you can play for free if you have four or artif four artifacts in play. And so yeah, if we can get the the triumvirate of like Mystic Forge plus Ugin plus Tezzeret, then almost everything in our deck is free. <laughs> Besides, you know, Sai, Kaya's Wrath, and another Tezzeret because everything else is is colorless. So like, you know, if it's if it colorless and it costs two or less, we play it for free with Ugin. And if it's a if it's Karn, Karn, Golos, or Ugin, we can play it for free because of Tezzeret. I guess Mystic Forge would be the only other card that would cost a couple of mana. Uh, if we have like ten artifacts in play and a Tezzeret, we can just play a Stone Cold Serpent for ten for free. Pretty crazy. The thing that's really great about this deck in Historic is really Mindstone. Mindstone speeds this deck up a ton you know being able to play mindstone on turn two and ramp and and uh everything like i love having mindstone in the deck all right uh but yeah so that, that's what our deck's about we got some wraths for like the creature decks we got Psy to make some artifact um thopters for us as far as our sideboard we got glass casket against aggro where it's also an artifact uh we got noxious grasp against gruel and I guess we could play it against Esper to kill the Planeswalkers, but I got four Spyglass, mostly for Esper, that that's going to be like the thing that I want. Because you really need two Spyglasses in play against Esper. You need one for Big Teferi, one for Small Teferi, because otherwise the other Teferi will get rid of it. So we, we're playing a full four because we need two. Um, an extra Kaya's Wrath, and then some goodies to go grab with Karn the Great Creator. All right, so here we go. Let's see how this does in best of three in historic. I don't think we've played it in historic best of three before. So let's see, traditional, historic, ranked, Esper Affinity. Just a fun deck to play, because when you get rolling, it's awesome. So yeah, we'll, we'll have a uh, Theros tomorrow. I mean, so, I mean, you have to, like, sign up to to do, like, the Theros pre-release stuff. Like, you know, you have to, to sign up for them. And I've I never done that. I just don't. I'm not really interested in it. I'm just going to play it tomorrow with everybody else. All right, we're going to need more than one land. Okay. Let's get rid of Fabled Passage. No, let's get rid of Watery Grave. You definitely don't need another... We don't need a second blue or black. I guess we need that black for fate, for Kaya's Wrath. I guess I could have gotten rid of Arch of Arazka then. Yeah, may maybe that was just greedy keeping the Arch of Arazka because of Kaya's Wrath.
Well, hopefully Kai's Wrath isn't too slow. I don't really want to throw down Stone Coral Serpent before the Wrath, for obvious reasons. It looks like maybe we need to. It's going to be a lot of damage. So basically, if I play Stone Coral Serpent right now, it's like gain 5 life. Um... I would probably trade this in to gain 5 life. That, that sounds like a, a reasonable use for the card. But of course, later on it may actually trade with stuff, though. Or it's not really trading with anything here. The other thing about playing the Stonecrawl Serpent is it shows my opponent that I have a pretty weird deck. And maybe that incentivizes them to play another creature. If I just play land pass, they're definitely not going to play anything into a, a sweeper. And so yeah, now we get another creature from the sweeper. And we're not taking damage from the land war elf that they would have just attacked us with with all of that. So we really gained six life. Because it would have been five plus one from land war elf. Plus we get another creature. Alright, so I have two white, two black no matter where I go. Um, I'm going to get, see, black is basically important for, for the black castle, or what, this white for the white castle. The white castle is probably more valuable. My IQ? Oh, I, I had no idea what my IQ is. I've never, never taken an IQ test. Uh, let's go Karn. Get some extra cards. Are you certain of your decision? <laughs> yeah, Glass Casket does kind of seem like an enchantment, not an artifact, because it's, it's white and we kind of associate white with enchantments. No. Okay. So the castle is coming into play untapped. I'm going to keep it because I do want a, another land. Huh. That's an easy block. Do not tap like that. Alright, there we go. I am far. Oh, Benza. Oh. Say hello. I may be paying a life to exile this isolated chapel, maybe. I can probably afford it. <clears throat> cool. Um, I'm going to draw this, though. Ooh. Now we're talking. I can't play Tezzeret and Ugin, can't? No, because I just have... I have three artifacts. Even if I minus Karn, I'll have four... 
Um, and then it would be then I'd be one short. So I'm one mana short. I can't get. Oh, do I have? What do I have in my sideboard? No, I don't. I don't have like a, a creature or planeswalker I can grab. Mm. So I guess I just have to play Ugin. I don't get to Tezzerat also, unfortunately. When you understand the reality, you understand yourself. Um. Hmm. We're not doing a good job of hitting cards to play for free. There we go. Make this thing a 3-3. Alright, now we're going. Here, you can turn into a... A 2-2. Two -two. Go do some blocking. Some solutions must be built. All right, now we're going. Our next turn's going to be amazing. I mean, that was already an amazing turn. <laughs> no, we're playing Ring to Stork right now. Yeah, Cocoon, and yeah, no, I still have my, my paper collection, so yeah, I have, a, I have a really nice paper collection still. Alright, get this extra Kai's Wrath in here. Um, obviously, we're playing the Grasp. We'll play, like, two Caskets and, like, keep one in the board to grab with Karn. I maybe just sideboard out Karn, though. Maybe I'll just bring in the extra Casket and sideboard out Karn. Karn's kind of slow. I don't know. We're we're taking we're bringing a lot in. Well, this just doesn't match up very well. What do I think of Psy? Is it a good enough blocker? Maybe not. I know, I was gonna do some zap stuff with Tezzeret. That was gonna be fun. All right, I'll cut one of the eggs. We just kind of have to trim. And then I guess I'll take out one Karn, the great creator. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Yeah, I think I want to keep the serpents because they can block for me. But yeah, we have to trim a little bit. Last casket. Your card too late. Is that just the ideal hand? Turn two, love struck beast. Turn three, questing beast. Land Wolf is busted. Survived an apocalypse. I yeah. will survive you. Alright, well I mean 
Maybe I draw Kai. I mean, even if I draw Kaya's Wrath, I assume that they have something they can minus five with Vivian, bye, like bye. a haste creature that kills me, I assume. Oh, yeah, maybe Kakuna. I I am working on... Because I, I probably will be selling my paper collection, and so I am working on... Um, uh, I'm working on cataloging it all. My heart beats in unison with the wild. This will be fun to watch. Well, that's where I thought we were going to be anyway after this turn, but we got a Vivian out of them. So that's cool. Hmm. Had hit that Kaya's Wrath, which we could cast because of Guild Globe. But we're still going to be in a rough spot. Maybe I should play some Spyglasses because of these Vivians. Vivian is really, really hard to beat. I guess I could just play one Tezzeret. No, that was just an awesome hand for them. I, I hope they don't have that again. I liked whenever they had the uh, two lands the first time. don't like turn one land or elf. I don't like that one bit. Okay, and we're digging for... Ooh, I like that thing attacking. We're digging for Kai's Wrath, of course. Game one, we had Kai's Wrath on turn four, and we won. Game game two, we never saw Kai's Wrath. We lost. Game three, do we draw Kai's Wrath? Not today. We're sure, we're sure trying. We are sure trying. Now, Vivian and Questing Beast are the two cards I do not want to see. Yeah, they got turn one Land Orolf every every game, but I I couldn't find turn four Kaya's Wrath, except for only one game, even though I was drawing a lot more cards. We both have four of them.
it's basically questing bees just did a lot of damage I was pretty close to casting Tezzeret, then casting Ugin. But this game, a lot of it was just not finding Kai's Wrath. I'll be surprised if we get another turn. We get another turn. All right, well, Tezzeret can do some stuff for us. So Tezzeret means the Karn is free. Karn can go grab. Um, how are we doing on artifacts? One, two, three, four, five. I could do... Uh, so I could grab Golos and play Golos for free, but I can also play Meteor Golem for free if I minus Tezzeret. If I plus Tezzeret... You know, so plus Tezzeret would do, what, like seven damage? If I minus Tezzeret, I can grab Stone Coral Serpent. I think we'll do that. And then Meteor Golem. Alright, so we'll Serpent for 5. Now we have 7 artifacts because of Psy, so now Meteor Golem's free. And we blow up Yorvo. I don't know if that's better than just... If, if I just play Golos, then I have seven, then I get to tick up for 7 and gain 7 life, and I would, I would have a Golos and a 1-1 one, one in play. And obviously I'd be able to activate Golos the next turn because of all these things. I could just crack these and activate Golos. <laughs> that was a pretty crazy turn, though. We just played a Tezzeret, a Karn, a Meteor Golem, and a 5-5 five, five Stone Coral Serpent. And we got, you know, the two 1-1s. One, one deck is sweet. Hopefully we don't just die. I can block that. I will not lose another friend. Yeah, I'm going to get Golos and activate Golos. I don't have any lands that gain life. I could go grab Arch of Araska. Could get this Blast Zone to blow up, what, a Land of War Elf? Castle Ardenvale. Go get the Arch of Araska. Okay. So activating this would cost just one Guild Globe? Yeah, because that adds two different mana colors. Cool. Mystic Forge free now because of Golos. Uh, we'll go Temple, scry this land to the bottom. Uh, 
We'll just keep Noxious Grasp. All right, tick up. I could, I could exile the Noxious Grasp and and look to try to do more, and try looking at the next card. But that's still a plus ten. Man, what, what a game. This is, this is, this game kind of shows what this deck's all about. This game three here. I think we're going to lose forever. Most of the game, we're like thinking we're going to lose. And then uh, suddenly we just start casting a ton of stuff for free. And then we're just like, oh, hey, we're ahead when we win. Yeah, Brack, I didn't, I didn't apply for it. No, it's not going to be gone. It just, no, historic. It's a, it's a thing that goes in cycles. You're not, there's not going to be historic ranked, but there's still going to be the both the best of three and best of one events. So now, now you get to play the events, and uh, earn a lot of gold with historic and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they also have a, a standard variant of this. Um, I think the last time I played it, last time I played it, I played it in best of one, um, I don't know the exact time that Theros releases tomorrow. There's a, a link, but just, just Demir Affinity. I think I may call it Demir Affinity Forge, because we're Mystic Forge. the blast on back. More left start beast. All right, trying to get this Ugin out in play as early as possible. I could play Mystic Forge next turn, but then I don't get to play Ugin the following turn. I think I want to play Mindstone to get to Ugin. Ooh. No, maybe I just play Mystic Forge this turn. Yeah, actually, let's do this. Because now I can... Um... I can. Gosh. Yeah, sure. Hmm. I can't even. Even if we find Kai's Wrath, I can't cast it now because of Goblet Shrine. Struck Beast is so brutal. Alright, bring in the six removal spells. And we gotta cut one more thing. Just a Psy, I guess. I don't know. Psy's pretty good at playing defense. Hey, Kendis. So I think I'm bringing in the other, like last time I kept one glass casket in the board to grab with Karn. I think I want to just keep that, put that glass casket in the main though. Because I need that early. So maybe I just don't actually play the Karn. I don't know, going and grabbing Meteor Golem is pretty sweet.
I'll put one of those Karns back, I guess. Hey, Sanctuary Tank. Ten awesome months. Thank you so much. For keeping that going. Sometimes your opponent just... Kind of has it all. Happens. <laughs> there is great power in the things you make. Well, we're going to have to, like, just take, take time to... Uh, Blast zone, blast zone away the cinder vines is. Whoops. Yeah, I didn't mean I didn't want to tap that mind stone right there. Goblin. So they're tapped out. Hmm. I guess it's better to block with Golos and one of these, because then it's just Golos dying. If I block with, if I double block, they both die because one takes three, the other takes two. They both die. That's the card. Ready for that. I got you, Questing Beast. I got you. I'll make use of that later. I got you. All right, get that out of here. I can deal with that. OK. 
Okay, let's start. Let's get going. Start playing some artifacts. game now can we get game three the one that threw double cinder vines I don't think we would have won that on the draw <laughs> so our opponent's hand can't be that good Again, for us to win. They've curved out really well, both of these games, so maybe they'll have a game where they stumble. Maybe, you know, have to mulligan once or twice. They definitely had awesome curves, both those games. Well, this hand has Kaiserath, I guess. Oh, no, not Land of War Elf. Ugh. I should have drawn my card first with Guild Globe before playing that. Because we could draw a a temple. Come on, land. Come on, land. Nope. Nope, never mind. They still curved out perfectly. Sure, Island Cast Wrath. Yeah, I mean we have we have the Guild Globe. Man, Gruel curving out is just gonna be really tough for our slower deck to beat, and they did all three games. What's up, Alder Two, Errol? We we're going to be in a rough spot. Even if we did have Kai's Wrath, we would have gone down to four, and they would have the Cinder Vine still in play. That Cinder Vines was a problem. Yeah, Hawkeye's, Hawkeye's just kind of laying down. I don't know. He's still not better. I'm not worried about him. Same kind of hand. Historic's not leaving. Why does everybody think Historic's leaving? They're just not going to be... We're going to have events instead of ranked. It's just switching up the way that you play Historic. Serpent, go. Do some blocking. Oh, yeah, they have the countdown timer. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. A... 
Okay, well this time we don't have an egg. So... We need... White or black mana. Are you kidding me? Couldn't have drawn that last turn. Uh, yeah, Historica is pretty much Gruel Aggro. Yeah. Gruel Aggro and Esper Control. You basically face two decks in Historic. Which makes it pretty easy to metagame against. Um, but it, I'm playing a deck that I really enjoy playing, but it's not the best against Gruel Aggro, unfortunately. So it's not, it's not the best against 50% of the format. At least not not unless we have Kaya's Wrath on turn four. I'm going to take out a Mystic Forge, actually, instead of the Karn. We have to keep Kaya's Wrath. Unfortunately, Golden Egg, like, we have Golden Egg that only filters one color of mana. Right now we need two colors of mana filtered. So I may just have to, maybe I should just pop the Mind Stone here. Which I guess I could have done last turn. No, I was I did play my third land last turn. That really hurts that we, you know, cracked the mind stone so we're not going to have these things following this up. Maybe Gruel never stumbles. Like, this is five games in a row of us playing against Gruel and they didn't stumble whatsoever. Maybe just Gruel never stumbles. I mean, it's just five for five. Just, you know, like the first five turns of the game they had, you know, even the first four turns of the game they had could just use all of their mana perfectly every every turn, including turn one. Every single game. It's the best anti-gruel deck. 
Um, Esper should be good against Gruul if it, you know, built correctly. Um, I like Mono Black too. Let's see. This is frustrating. How come I stumble every single game and they never do? But that's all we do is stumble. Obviously, we needed to draw Kaya's Wrath, so we just blocked the 4 4. I think the four, three Wraths in the main and one in the board does not seem like we're playing enough. I guess we could, I guess we need to be playing more. Yeah, Galta probably wins Gruul Mirrors. So that's probably why they're playing Galta is for the Gruul, for all the Gruul Mirrors. So yeah, we'll start with Watery Grave. Now let these isolated chapels come into play tapped. Or untapped. Wow. Seventh game. Seventh game in a row versus Gruul, and this was the first game they didn't have a one drop, right? Oh, no, no, no. They didn't have a one drop the first time also because they had the multiple burning trees. No, so never mind. Not the first time they didn't have a one drop. But the, the Gruul decks do play four. You know, they all have four Cinder Vines in their sideboard, so that's kind of a problem playing an all artifact deck. Also, is everybody playing four cinder vines? Yeah, last game we kept two lands, we didn't draw a single land, and then this game we keep six lands and we draw four straight lands. It's like Wizards just wants, just wants Gruul to win. You want to play something unique and fun? Too bad, you die. Just play Gruul.
Alright, match number five. All right, we had an opponent mulligan. I don't think we've had that before. All right, Vanguard is protection from Kaya's Wrath. That's unfortunate. Our opponent stumbled. How about that? At least I thought they did. Maybe they didn't. That block is still, you know, like, we still take out a 2-1 with that block. I think we get Castle Ardenvale, I think. Or I could just get grab Temple of Silence to scry. Yeah, let's scry. I don't think I want to spend a lot of time activating Castle Iron Veil. There's Ugin. So they need uh, 10 total permanents. Three, six, seven. So a little ways away. Oh, that, that helps. That's a good permanent to have. Kind of awkward. They don't don't get to play Psy first. Do not defy the designs of an elder dragon. Secrets manifest before you. Yeah. It's lethal. Darn. Could have just played Kaya's Wrath and destroyed everything, gained two life, and then played Psy. I guess that was like the, the play I needed to do was Kaya's Wrath into Psy. But then you know they'd still have a Danto Vanguard, but then I'd have Psy. That that play probably probably would have kept like that would have been a good play. I should have done that. Playing the Ugin was pretty greedy.
All right, this one I'm going to take out Karn. I do, JJ. Yep, I have a switch. No, no, I wouldn't. No, we don't need Spyglass for uh, Adanto, the first fort. Um, oh, I guess. Oh, it take out. I guess Spyglass would take out. Not really take out, but it would stop Adanto Vanguard. So I probably should have kept in one of the four mana cards that can go grab Spyglass. I wouldn't want to just play Spyglass in my main deck. So I want to try to I want to play Psy here first before I play Guild Globe. Come on, lands. Mm. Now it's our turn to brick. Why a land would have really been nice. So I could have had Noxious Grass for that Benelux Marshal. Yeah, I, I have Smash. Um, I don't I don't really play very much Super Smash. It's not really a one player game too much. But I have it. I played the GameCube version a lot more, you know, back in the day. But I, I can tell from playing the the Switch version now. I'm not I'm not nearly as good as I used to be when I played all the time in high school. Just don't really play those kind of games too much anymore. I don't, I don't even think that Ugin really saves us next turn. We have to just draw Kaya's Wrath. Jeez. It's been an onslaught. Every opportunity. I will lend you my strength. I mean, if I draw Kai's Wrath now, the Gideon kills me. I don't have an out. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. So I guess looks like we just don't have enough sweepers. And talk about an aggressive format. Just don't have time for a treasure map. So I think we need, yeah, we need like four Kaya's Wrath's main. And not that treasure map. And then, uh, I mean, starting tomorrow, we'll be able to have like the, the other good white sweeper, which, which will honestly help a lot. It's a lot easier to cast than Kaya's Wrath. But um, as far as like three mana sweepers, I mean, there's just like what Cry of the Carnarium, which I guess is is the best. But like if we think about like Gruel, like Cry of the Carnarium just doesn't kill the stuff in Gruel. Like that's the problem with Cry of the Carnarium; it doesn't kill stuff in Gruel. Yeah, next time we play the deck, we're only going to play against Esper for sure. Thanks, JJ. Yeah, glad, glad you really enjoyed the Overcooked stream. Yeah, I'm definitely planning on doing more of that kind of stuff. So yeah, we could play Ritual of Sip, but then that's just more four mana Wraths. And Sid, of course, doesn't kill... Doesn't kill, like, Questing Beast. I don't know. None of, none of the other Wraths are good. They're all subpar. Need the new Wrath of God, whatever it's called. That they'll draw a card if they have a creature power four or greater. The and yeah, settle can get people, but Spellbreaker shuts that down. So you can play like Cleansing Nova and just have some five mana Wraths. Which I guess, you know, like Cleansing Nova slash Time Wipe. Yeah, maybe one sit, one cry. Take out the Citadel and the, the treasure map. Makes our Esper matchup worse, taking out those two cards, but... I mean, I could take out Helm of the Host. Don't really need Helm of the Host. <laughs> yeah. The problem, I mean, the problem with Cry of the Carnarium, I mean, if they just go turn one land where Elf, you know, turn two Spellbreaker, and you're on the draw, and you're just like, well, I'm just taking a bunch of damage before you even get to Cry of the Carnarium. Yeah, it's tough. Um, we got to we got to do some cool stuff whenever we got to play into the late game. Um, every single matchup we had was just an aggressive deck, and we did not really face opponents that were stumbling too much. That first game against White, I could have won, I think. Or I think if I would have just done Kai's Wrath Psy instead of play the Ugin, I think I would have got that. But Oh, well. Um, yeah, I really like this deck. It's just <laughs> stopping that, that super fast Gruul deck is really, really difficult with this deck. Because uh, we're just playing artifacts, you know? Like, it's, it's tough. Um, yeah. All right, but there we go. That's that's Esper Affinity. Uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there. If you have some good ideas of stopping Gruul with this while still being able to play a bunch of artifacts, let me know. Um, you know, maybe I need to play all the glass caskets in the main deck and stuff like that too. Um, I need more. Yeah, could could maybe just play more temples. I mean, the thing is, is like we have we have like these seven things that draw cards, turn two, and then you know like the Mind Stones help us ramp. Um, the uh, Arch of Araska, you know, like that's, we just never, you know, we didn't play against Esper, which is really what it's for, but the, the Arch could be, I guess it could just be another castle, Lock Twain, 
or you lose life instead, and then it's it's not a colorless land like Castle Castle Lock Twain at least casts Kaya's Wrath. Maybe we just need to do that because you know we did we did lose the one game where we needed to cast Kaya's Wrath and we couldn't. But yeah, just even just Cinder Vines, you know, like Cinder Vines is really difficult to deal with. You know, like all that pressure plus Cinder Vines, like that's def difficult to deal with. Gruel is just tough. Gruel is just tough. All right, but there we go. That's us for Affinity. Um, yeah, hit that like button, leave those comments. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.